repairing a 2 inch scale foul attraction engine part 10. Working on the live steam injector check valve as it is leaking and I decided to repair the crankshaft driven water pump as that was leaking a lot. If you watched the previous video about the first live steam test you will know that I replaced the injector. And I did this while the engine was in steam, everything was very hot. Here I'm just checking the tightness of the union nuts, now it's cool. If you've been watching the series you will know that I fitted a brand new water valve to the injector. Because the original one was heavily corroded and didn't work. Now I have the scenario that with a brand new water valve and an injector that I know does work, it still doesn't inject water into the boiler. Having said that, the gas-fired steam test was only up to £50 per square inch, which is the bottom end of the working range of an injector. And it was trying, at least. I thought I'd have a quick look at the check valve, though. The first thing to do is to remove the ball from the valve. And to do this, I used the unorthodox method of using some super glue on the old handle from the water valve. Sometimes these stainless steel balls can be difficult to get out of valves. They're not magnetic, so I couldn't use a magnet, that's why I decided that the super glue idea was possibly the best. After cleaning the seat of the valve, I fitted a new ball, and here I'm gently tapping a piece of brass bar with a small hammer to seat the ball on the hole in the check valve. With the help of a small amount of Loctite 542, I refitted the plug. This valve isn't very well made, the silver soldering's scruffy, the thread in the top isn't good, I would possibly think it's a good idea to replace it. Or maybe machine a new adapter flange and fit a commercial fitting to the flange. In the final episode of this series, which will be the next one, there'll be another steam test, so maybe it will work, maybe it won't. I'll find out tomorrow. Now I'm going to look at this pump. Parts on traction engines, even on the 45 half inch scale one that I have, are quite difficult to work on, and this is even worse. To remove the ram, there's a couple of things I can do. I can remove the fittings at the end of the cylinder by taking off these very small nuts, and I don't really want to do that. I'm going to try and remove the ram from the front of the pump. Whichever method I use, though, this tie bar has to be taken out of the equation. The tie bar is held to the main firewall by a small nut on the other end of it and as with everything on this engine it's been over tightened so it didn't freely come off the end of the tie bar and I had to spanner it all the way to the end. Patience is a virtue and eventually the tie bar was released. You may be wondering why I've done this, well the answer is simple, I cannot get a screwdriver into the ram to remove the pin that holds the ram to the eccentric rod. But now I can move the tie bar out of the way, it's a simple job to loosen the pin. But there was no way to get hold of this steel pin once it was loosened. I gave it some thought and came up with this idea. Like a lot of girlfriends I've had in the past, the solution was simple. So now it's top tip time. I'm using a telescopic magnet to withdraw the pin from the ram. The magnet already has one of the nuts stuck to it and when I put it close to the ram, the pin leaps out of the ram and sticks to the magnet and you can withdraw it. Very simple. The next part of the job wasn't simple, in fact it was a pain. Once again, owing to over-tightening and the distortion of the threads, this nut would not come off the bolt. I had to spanner it every step of the way. I kept trying to remove it with my fingers, but no, I spannered it right to the end of the travel. And the next part of the job is going to be worse. It's the nut underneath the eccentric strap, and that's in a fairly inaccessible place. This nut on the top really was a pain. I tried a needle file to rotate it, but no, I had to spanner it right to the end. Thankfully, the bolt didn't rotate, because it's a very tight fit, and it's got a flat on it that stops it rotating. This is the nut from underneath, and it came off surprisingly easily, because it hadn't been over-tightened. You may be wondering what this is, it's my t-shirt. And that's all I could see with the camera when I removed the eccentric strap and the rod. All I need to do now is pull out the pump ram and slide it out of the pump, but it wasn't going to do that because there were too many things in the way. I thought this was going to be the case, but I tried the job anyway. I sat on my chair in the workshop and thumbed through a catalogue of high public buildings suitable for jumping off. 
I pulled the ram out of the pump as far as I could, and then I noticed this. The pump ram is fitted with a very worn silicone o-ring. Deep joy, after all this, it's an easy fix. Using my scriber, I removed the old o-ring, and here, as you can see, it's worn very flat. For a better view, I put the o-ring on the bench, and here you can see just how worn it is. It's very flat all around the outside. In my hand are two o-rings, one's a new one at the bottom, and the worn one's at the top. I fitted the new o-ring to the ram, and it's a perfect fit. The ram slid into the cylinder without any pressure whatsoever, which means the o-ring is not causing any friction. Assembly is the reverse of disassembly, but this time the nut that was damaged went in the bin, and this is the nut from the other side, and the nut that you can't see underneath was replaced with a new one. In case you're wondering what the sizes of threads are, these are 5BA nuts. It's time now to test it and see whether it still leaks. I'm admitting some compressed air to the boiler, and when I open the regulator and close the water pump bypass valve, which means water's been pumped into the boiler, as you will see very shortly, the pump doesn't leak. I keep finding hairs all over the engine. I think there must be some sort of animal involved where it lives. These hairs are not from me, mine don't look like that. Even though it is inefficient on compressed air, I'm using the water lifter to pump some water from my water container into the bunker tank. My compressor doesn't have the capacity to keep the pressure high on this engine, so very soon it runs slowly. I let the pressure build on the compressor and open the regulator again, and as you can see, the water is going up the gauge glass. There are a couple of very slight weeps from around the area of the pump's valves, but it's nothing to worry about. The owner of the engine said it was very difficult to locate the ash pan on the mountings underneath the boiler. I cut a couple of pieces of wood to fit underneath the ash pan to hold it in position. Because I did find that to get the pins to engage properly, I needed two hands on the pin to allow it to slide into the location points underneath the boiler but it's still not an easy task. And that's it for this episode. The next one will be the final steam test, which will take place tomorrow. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.